up? A new Google TV is here, but is it better? We've also got a camera with a viewfinder in the front. Nicole Lee has incredible 4G. It's time to watch before you buy. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Welcome to For You Buy, the show, the review show on Twitter, where we get great stuff and then we give everybody who works at Twitter a chance to review stuff. I don't think we've ever had this guy review anything. Uh, Leo, no, we haven't. I've never been on Before You Buy, but I'm excited. Yeah, this is Robert Balliser, Father Robert Balliser, Padre SJ in our chat room. Also the host of our one of our new shows on Twit This Week in Enterprise Tech. That's right, Twyatt on the set. It's all about uh, well, enter enterprise professionals, mm -hmm. IT pros, and just geeks who want to know how it's all put together. Monday's noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. It's a great show. you got to watch. Uh, this week we gave you this new device. This is something that I think Google announced at Google I.O., the new yes, they did. Google TV. What is it? It's the GS7 Google TV. From Sony. Let's take a look. I'm Father Robert Balliser, the digital Jesuit, host of Twiet, this week in enterprise tech on the Twit Network. And today I've got the Sony GS7 Google TV. The NSC GS7 is Sony's latest attempt to bring Google TV to the masses. This $200 box aims to be the perfect add-on to your entertainment center providing internet-connected services and content to any HDMI-connected television. Out of the box, Sony provides the bare essentials, including a remote, the GS7, a power cable, and an IR blaster. My favorite feature of the GS7 has to be its remote. It's a two-sided unit that combines a keyboard on one side with the touchpad on the other. The remote is littered with buttons that look like they are designed to mimic a standard TV or DVR remote, a plus for the less technically inclined while also including built-in extra functionality for users of PlayStations or Sony TVs. Powered by two AA batteries, the remote connects to the GS7 via Bluetooth and includes volume and channel rocker switches in a side configuration that will be familiar to smartphone users. The touchpad is multi-touch capable and lets you drag, drop, click, pinch, and zoom in the same way that you do with your laptop touchpad. The keyboard is compact, but still quite usable, Definitely more so than trying to type in movie, music, and TV titles with a number pad. The remote features a keyboard backlight for typing in low light conditions and sports accelerometers that automatically turn off the control surface that is face down so that you don't accidentally type or touch. The GS7 has ports aplenty. It features an inbox power supply, two USB 2.0 ports, 10 100 Ethernet, an IR blaster, digital optical out, and HDMI pass through featuring HDMI CEC. The CEC means that you can automatically control a CEC-enabled device connected to the GS7 via HDMI, a superior method to the IR blaster. The GS7 is easy to set up. Plug in your HDMI cables, provide power, connect Ethernet and the IR blaster if you plan on using them, and you're ready to go. Upon power-up, the player runs you through a series of configurations to set language, power preferences, and to properly set up overscan to take advantage of your screen. You'll also be given the choice of a wireless or wired connection to the internet. You are then prompted to enter the Google account you'll be using with your Google TV and asked for your backup preferences. After setting your zip code, audio, and cable box preferences, the Google TV is now ready to use with a set of the most commonly used applications, including Netflix, YouTube, and Chrome. Additional applications are available through the Google Play Store, as are the full catalog of Google movies and TV series. The interface was slick and snappy. It was relatively easy to find content I was looking for, be it through Netflix, YouTube, or the Google Store. The keyboard and touchpad made it much easier to use the Google interface than a typical TV or cable box remote, and video and audio quality were top-notch, with no hint of stutter, lag, or pixelation. There are a few apps that work quite well on Google TV, including Pandora, YouTube, and Netflix, but there are still a fraction of the Play Store apps available for use on the GS7. This is partly made up by the inclusion of a Google Chrome browser, which I found to be full-featured and quite usable, but somehow still out of place and mismatched to the style of Google TV. 
the Sony GS7 definitely has a few things going for it. It is undoubtedly the best Google TV device ever to have come out, much better than the first generation. It's faster, it's slicker, it's easier to set up, easier to use, and it has ports galore. Everything from HDMI in and out with the control channel so I can control other devices through the HDMI connection, to USB, Ethernet, optical audio out, and uh, well, the IR blaster. That being said, that's about it. On the con side, it still feels very much unbaked, unfinished. Some applications work, but some others don't. Some others don't work right. A good example would be picture in picture. Now there's a really cool feature that I can use where I can put applications next to one another, or I can put one application within another application. It's, it's intuitive. I should be able to put one application here and, and have content over here, but that's not how it works in Google TV. Some applications can be pictured and windowed and some others can't. Now I'm sure there's reasoning behind it, but it doesn't feel intuitive. So what happens is I end up being frustrated that I can't get the content and watch it the way I want to watch it. Now the remote control is another thing. I actually really like this remote control. I thought it was cool. I fell in love with it the first time I saw it at Google I.O. I like the fact that it has a full-size keyboard. I like the fact that it has a uh, well touchpad on the back. I like the fact that they built in sensors and accelerometers so I can use the remote as an actual game controller. But my enthusiasm for the device as a developer did not translate into the enthusiasm of the people who actually used it. They found it clunky, they found it complicated, and uh, well, they just gave up. Now, they could fix this. They could make a firmware patch that makes the apps run better. They could, uh, well, redesign the actual usage of the buttons on the remote so that it made more sense. But for right now, if I'm looking at buy, try, or don't buy, this is a definite don't buy. This is the Sony GS7 Google TV. That's a little disappointing to me. You know, I have the original Logitech review, and there's so much to like about this. Uh, they made some great improvements. I think HDMI, CEC, the ability to control a bunch of devices. This remote is pretty slick. Um, I agree with you on all, on all the points. And I also agree with you, I guess, that it doesn't solve the problem it's meant to solve. Exactly. I mean, it's slick hardware. It's fast. The remote is really cool. But if you're a regular user, you want to be able to look for your content in one place. Yes. You want to type in uh, Game of Thrones right. and be able to find out exactly where it is. You don't want to have to go from app to app to app. And unfortunately, you still have to do that with the Google TV. Not Google's fault. It's just that folks at Hulu and everywhere else aren't making that information available exactly. outside of their app. Yeah. Which is why it's a don't buy right now. Because at this price right. point, it's just not enough functionality. Yep. But if Google could fix those licensing problems, right. this would be a very compelling device. So close. They're getting closer every Really day. close. Padre, so good to see you. Padre SJ in our chat room. Father Robert Ballister, make sure you watch This Week in Enterprise Tech every Monday at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern time. I'll it's a there. really great show. I'm going to take the mic because we're going to go cross stage now and say hello to Tony Wang. I love this show because it's a chance to not only show off all of this beautiful stuff that we spent so much money building in our new studios. Can I call it new studios if it's a year old? But also it's a chance to get everybody on camera. We don't see enough of Tony Wang. Let me give you the microphone, Tony. Tony Wang is, uh, you're a senior editor now. You schedule all the editors, you yeah. charge everything, um, and you edit a goodly number of the shows. But you're also, I know, a photo bug. Oh, yeah, I love taking pictures. Yeah. So. We always give you the good cameras. Yeah. This is an unusual one. This yeah, is from Samsung. Look. look at that. You can see yourself in it. Yeah. Well, tell me about it. What is this? Well, it's a Samsung uh, DV300F, and so basically a point and shoot with a display peel in the front. Let's take a look at Tony's review. I'm Tony for Twitter TV and before you buy and today I'm here to review the Samsung DV300F point and shoot camera. The Samsung DV300F is 199 MSRP and you can probably find it um, street price for 149 or less. I have to say I'm pretty impressed um, for something that's entry level it's got pretty crucial um, built-in features. You have all the different photo modes. Uh, it's even got a fireworks mode as well as some, you know, sport mode and uh, it's got Wi-Fi built-in and you have your standard social network. You got Facebook, Picasa, um, Photo Bucket and uh, YouTube for uploading your video. And once your Wi-Fi is set up, you can just upload it straight from your camera. My favorite feature is the mobile link app where you can actually go and um, you can just install the free app on your 
a smartphone, Android smartphone, and send the photos from your camera over Wi-Fi. Or if you want to, you can take your、uh, memory card from this camera and pop it into your phone because it's actually、uh, shooting all the photos to a micro SD card. The most、uh, outstanding feature on this camera is the 1.5 inch、uh, forward-facing、um, LCD display that's hidden in the camera、uh, when it's off. And you know the function of this camera is really it's for fun. And with the display, you can take pictures with your friends, and that's what I did. I took a lot of pictures with my friends. So and.、Um, While you're taking these pictures, you notice that if you're doing it indoor, you might want to have the flash on.、Uh, it's hard to keep the camera stable when you're holding it one-handed and pointing at you and your friends. And、um, image quality is not bad. It's 16 megapixel, but it is shooting JPEG, so doesn't leave you much to work with、uh, in post-production. Overall, the、uh, face detection works really well.、Uh, most of the time, it picks up at least one other person in the photo, if not both, and it will focus on that on the face. Camera also shoots a 720p HD video in 30 frames per second as well as 15 frames per second. The image quality is okay, and the audio quality leave much to be desired. So、pros and cons. The camera has Wi-Fi built in. That's a pro. The nifty 1.5 inch、uh, display, front-facing display, is very useful if you like taking a lot of pictures with your friends. The compact size and the、um, well-built quality is also a pro. Con the camera,、uh, the digital zoom is practically useless, and、uh, the camera only shoots JPEG. Buy, try, or don't buy. I'm gonna have to say it's a don't buy based on the image quality and also usability of the camera. I'm Tony for Twitter TV and before you buy, and this is the Samsung DV 300F. A don't buy, but this is the perfect Facebook camera because it has a picture of you right in the front. Now this is kind of cool too. You found this is a yeah, it's it's actually the children mode. <laughs> they call it. Kind of so I don't know if you can see this, but there's a maybe maybe Chad, maybe you can get that shot. There's a little kitty video on there. Can you see that? Yeah. And the idea is when you're using this camera, the kid stares at the video. It doesn't notice you're taking pictures and is laughing too. Yeah, it doesn't work with Ozzy. I don't know what happened. No, in fact, I don't think this will work with anybody. You find that amusing? It's just dumb. Yeah. But anyway, too bad because I love the、uh, front-facing LCD、yeah. and it looks pretty good. You can't see it when it's off. You、yeah. can't tell it's there. All right, don't buy. Thank you, Tony. You can keep it. Let's walk over to appreciate it. Tony Wang, one of our stalwarts, one of the first employees at Twit. We're gonna walk over to the before you buy slash Gizwiz slash whatever the hell else we use this set for set. And say hi to Chad. You can put the camera away now, Chad. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> so, Chad, here's your mic. Thanks.、Um, this is the Chrome Book. Correct.、Series、so、five. we showed you last week the Chrome Box. These are、right. more things that, frankly, Google has to give away. To be honest with you, they gave this away at Google I/O. This is a laptop running Chrome OS. Absolutely. All right. Well, let's take a look at your review. Sounds good. Hi, my name is Chad Johnson. I'm with Twit, and before you buy, reviewing the Samsung Chromebook. This is an updated Chromebook、uh, to their last Chromebook, which I also reviewed、uh, on Before You Buy earlier this year. Let's start off this review with the hardware. It's a slim design, not as thin as, say, an ultrabook, and it is of plastic construction. The、uh, on the left side of the Chromebook, we have uh, a power uh, input. An Ethernet jack, which actually folds down to take a full Ethernet cable, Display Port, and USB, and then finally mic and headphone here at the end. On the right side, you have a、uh, lock connector for、uh, keeping your laptop locked down, USB port, and then also an SD card slot, which、uh, doesn't need to be covered because it has a little flip-down cover right there. On the back, you have a SIM card slot if you have the、uh, 3G compatible、uh, version, and then the display is a 12.1 inch display, and that's coming in at、uh, 1280 by 800 resolution. So you can actually watch、uh, HD content 
uh, with this computer. The keyboard is a chiclet style keyboard, and then there's a glass oversized trackpad, uh, which the whole trackpad depresses uh, when you click on it. Inside this Chromebook, there is a Intel Celeron 1.3 gigahertz dual core processor, four gigs of RAM, and then 16 gigabytes of internal storage. That internal storage is used for offline docs, which now some of the apps inside the Chrome Web Store uh, supports. Let's get into the pros and cons of this Chromebook. First, really, really fast startup. From absolute shutdown to startup, it's about eight seconds long. Also, the updates happen behind the scenes, uh, and it's, uh, you pretty much don't see it at all if you ever shut down the Chromebook and turn it back on. You're up to date. Also, you don't have to worry about viruses at all with this Chromebook. Some of the cons are the connectivity. Out here in this alley, I don't have any Wi-Fi, so I kind of have a $500 brick. It really doesn't do anything. Also, the screen wasn't as good as I'd want. Its vertical angle was really, really bad. Horizontal angle was okay, but uh, vertically, I had to uh, adjust the screen an awful lot to uh, get a, a, a good point of view. And then also the price coming in at uh, $500 for the Wi-Fi version and then $550 for the 3G version, uh, that was a little bit steep. In using the Chromebook, I found it really, really usable. The now windowed uh, OS is uh, really, really, really useful. Definite upgrade compared to the other Chromebook. Um, buy, try, don't buy for the Samsung Chromebook Series 5. I'm gonna have to say don't buy. Unfortunately, it's just a little underpowered for uh, what I want. I don't have connectivity any everywhere at the moment, and uh, I would truly rather just buy a tablet nowadays instead of a $500 computer replacement. That's it, I've been Chad Johnson for Twit and Before You Buy. Thanks for watching, see you next time. I have to say, that, that seems like a steep price. Would your recommendation have changed if it were $300? Yes. Yeah. The, the, and the other, the older model is $100 less at yeah. $400. So oh, if, it was, if it was less than an iPad, maybe. If if it, it, you could get a good price as, a, uh, as the Asus uh, Chrome, as the, the Nexus 7, yeah. I'd say go ahead and buy bucks, it. 250 bucks. You know, you could get a Windows laptop for roughly right. the same price right so right. i just don't see them competing in a market where you can get so much more i agree if if we're less maybe and, and the pros of of having an instant boot and so how quickly and, that came back on the, like those are some pros but not enough not enough macbook not enough air to, does that yeah most uh, windows the new you know they're gonna be against, yeah. against windows 8 machines it'll do that too yeah. all right chad johnson thank you chad is of course our camera operator for the show back to work johnson and uh, the producer of twit Twig, Mac, Break Weekly. He works very hard around here, and it's great to have you. Let's take a long walk. Chad, you're going to have to lead me. Whoa. Boy, he did that well until you hit the wire. He's going <laughs> to... Uh, I, I mentioned while we're going over to say hi to Nicole Lee, you can catch all our shows on YouTube, youtube.com slash twit. We're going to have a Before You Buy channel on YouTube very soon. You can also email us if you've got suggestions for something you'd like to see reviewed or complaints about uh, anything you saw on the show. BYB at twit.tv. Let me walk over here and say hello to Nicole Lee, our show's producer. Hello. For many years, reviewed uh, cell phones at CNET, so yes. we give you all the cell phone reviews. Mm -hmm. You've seen them all. <laughs> Most of them. This time, now I liked the Incredible when it came out, the mm -hmm. HTC Incredible. Yes. Early Android phone. It was a beautiful bit of hardware. Mm -hmm. It reminded me of the of the first Nexus One. It came out before the Nexus One. Mm -hmm. um, now we're, this is the third generation of Incredible. Yes, this is the third generation uh, Droid Incredible 4G LTE. And as this name suggests, it has 4G LTE. And that's, that's nice. basically the, the, the big difference between this one and its predecessors. But as you can see, the design is pretty much unchanged from the previous Incredibles. You know, the very, I have to say, having used all these different Android phones with 4.3 inch screen size or bigger, 
the four inch screen seems almost too retro. They've gotten small. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's it's a little interesting. But if you're looking for a smaller yes. phone, this might be a good choice. If you if you think the four point, you know, the Galaxy S3 is too big for right. you or something like that, this is probably a this nice. This is a, a good looking uh, screen. Now, yeah. it reminds me very much of a kind of a small HTC One, mm -hmm. their big brother product. Is mm -hmm. it? It's uh, it's a ILS uh, LCD. It's a super LCD super according LCD. to HTC, okay. and it's a QHD resolution, not the highest resolution right. phone out there. Um, the screen does look good. I'd say it's pretty. It has this new HTC Sense 4.0 mm -hmm. running so 4.0 um, uh, at Jelly Bean as well. No, this is not Jelly Bean. This is Ice Cream Sandwich. Ice Cream Sandwich, yes. okay. Which is, um, I mean, since that's Jelly Bean is so that's new, I mean, that's, yeah. pretty, that's pretty acceptable. And I like the new HTC uh, Sense. I've always liked Sense, but I think 4.0 answers a lot of complaints people had about Sense. This, it's it's good looking. It's easy to use. It doesn't it gets it, of all of the uh, customizations, it's the one that seems the most different. And I think you know if if you if you're not happy with ice cream sandwich, as some people are, this provides the the same Android look and feel that some people you know lo well, love. Well, I notice it it solves one of the things I hate about ice cream sandwich. It does have capacitive buttons at the bottom yes. that don't move. I don't like it that Ice Cream Sandwich can move the buttons anywhere it wants on yeah, the screen. Yeah, so like at the bottom here, you know you have the, the back, the home, and then this interesting HTC What's that? thing where you can sort of flip through your open um, programs in a uh, okay, well, you know, cascading fashion. Ice Cream Sandwich does that too, but it does it in a stack, so this yeah. is just a different looking a different look, recent apps, same idea. Yeah, um, same idea. How and about the, uh, how about power and uh, memory and all the right, hardware? Right, so specs? it has a one point two gigahertz um, dual core processor. Okay. Which is you know I mean not the fastest out there but pretty good considering. Plenty fast. Plenty yeah. fast. On the back there is an eight megapixel camera. Um, quality, I don't know. I I'm, I'm so spoiled with the 4S. I I don't think it really matches up to that. Um, I feel, but the quality was still pretty good. Pretty good for what it does. The under bright sunlight, it looks fine. Kind of saturated. I, I do love the camera speed, though. Let me try to take a camera shot. Getting into the camera, look how fast that was. That was almost instantaneous. It's instant. So yeah. it was a thick field And photos. shooting is pretty quick. Snapping is like really fast. That's one thing I think Ice Cream Sandwich has really improved, right. is the so speed like the of the speed camera. The speed overall is really yeah. good. But as always, when you have a manufacturer like HTC, you're not using the Android camera app. You're using HTC's, HTC's camera, camera app. app. Does it have panorama and some other features? It, like all, it has all of those HDR, features. HDR, smile yeah. Shot. It's all the all of those smile shot especially. Yeah. So um, that's cool. That's where you're taking a picture of somebody until they smile. I won't shoot the shot. Yeah, I like I know. that. I think that's a great idea. So um, one of the big features of this phone is that it has 4G LTE. Now I live in San Francisco. So and you we get, do 4G. get 4G LTE. See, I've ignored it because we don't have it in Petaluma. <laughs> big so difference. Great. Absolutely. So here's your and speed test try, results. Try to get to the yeah. results there. Yeah. So these, the two on the bottom, I don't know if you can see it on the screen here. The two on the bottom are um, in San Francisco. 23 megabits down? Yeah. That's what? down and up. So that, that's, the first one is down and the second one is 20, up. You're getting more up than down? No, yeah, no, it's, it's the other way around. Well, it depends. Like the, the download is 25. <laughs> 2.5. Okay, it's fast. It's fast. <laughs> compared Holy to, cow, that's fast. That's really, and compared to Paluma, which I just tested recently, and it's like... like <laughs> There's a big difference. Uh, a big but difference. But we're 3G, we're not 4G. So we're that's 3G the kind of... here. You're getting 10 times faster. 10 you're times. getting faster than a cable modem in most cases. Absolutely. So, wow. How about battery life? Is that impacted by the 4G? I, I, I really think so. Like right now, I'm struggling. I have like 10% battery oh, life. Oh, right yeah. Here. You're almost at the end. It's only <laughs> 4 in the afternoon. Uh, I so, hate that. Yeah, so it's, I think, 1,700 milliamp battery. Now, the HTC One it. does not have a removable battery. Does this the incredible... This does have a removable battery. I think that's battery. key. You gotta, if you can put another battery, so what? Big deal. You just bring one in your pocket and pop you it You can in. even get those um, battery extenders. You can sort of make your phone a little thicker, but it does last a little, long, right. last a little longer. Now, this is a Verizon-only phone, or are yes, other carriers going to have it? Yes, it is a Verizon-only phone. Okay, mm -hmm. and how much? It is 150 with a two-year contract. That's competitive. That's good. Um... My only sort of gripe with that, and I will get to that in the pros and cons section, is that for fifty dollars more, you can get the get the S3. You're this close. You're this close to getting a really good phone. And you still pay the same monthly data fees, so it's not like you're really saving much money over two <laughs> right. years. Right. I mean, it's it's. I mean, we'll, 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 the well, pros, let's go to the let's, let's do the, the pros and cons. cons. Okay. Pros. Pros. It's fast. Zippy. 4G yeah. LTE. You really can't beat that if you live in a Verizon area, especially. Um, the camera quality is pretty good. The shutter speed was, I thought, was decent. And um, it has Beats Audio, if you if you care about that that kind of thing. That's Beats the distinctive audio. red ring you now see on HTC phones. That tells you, because HTC bought, uh, at least bought a stake in, a stake in Dr. Uh, Dre's Beats. Beats. Yeah, so, so the audio quality was quite good, I have yeah. to say. I, I like it. has anyway. the Beats headphones. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Um, cons. So again, the cons is that it doesn't really stand out from the rest of the Android field. Uh, you have the S3, you have the One X, you have all of these really, really good phones. Right. That it just doesn't stand out, I feel, from all of those other well, competitors. The screen is smaller. That might be a plus, but it's thicker. It's thicker. <laughs> it's not so, as small a phone. It's a right. odd and combination. Another um, sort of con, like I said before, is the price. It's 150 For only $50 more, right. you get a really good phone. For another, like, maybe $100 more, you get, like, a, an especially amazing phone. I'm guessing so, here, but I'm thinking this is a don't buy. <laughs> the thing is, if I say don't buy, I, it's, it's a really terrible product. And it's... It's not a terrible product. It's, it's a great it's, product. It's a great product. So I have to say it's a try. Right. Just because for some people, the size is perfect. Right. Uh, for some people, the, you know, they don't really care about the, the size of the S3. Right. But, you know, it kind of really depends on what you want from a phone. And um, from my perspective, it's a try. One last question. Given that you're getting such incredible internet speeds yeah. on 4G, does it have tethering or hotspotting? Yes, it does. It does have... Um, Wi-Fi hotspot for up to five connected devices. See, that's great. That could be, I know the Verizon caps it and so forth, but that could really be a great Wi-Fi access point for a lot of people with that kind of speed. Yeah. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Nicole Lee, thank you so much. Nicole Lee produces the show. In fact, we wouldn't have a show if it weren't for Nicole. And Brian Burnett, our technical director, and Chad He's Johnson, our camera gang. <laughs> Thanks to Chad for uh, reviews as well as Tony Wang and uh, Father uh, Robert Balliser and, of course, Nicole. Thanks to you for watching the show. We do Before You Buy Live, believe it or not, uh, every Tuesday, about 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. That's 2200 UTC on twit.tv. Do watch live. We love getting the feedback uh, as we're doing the show from the chat room. But, of course, we make on-demand audio and video available always after the fact at twit.tv slash BYB. Email Nicole, BYB at twit.tv. Watch our videos and tell your friends on YouTube. That's youtube.com slash twit. And come back here next week for four more great reviews. I'm Leo Laporte. Thanks for joining us. And remember, you got to watch before you buy. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.